Father, we thank you for your word. We acknowledge you have spoken. And God, we want to hear a word from you that will help us, Lord, to live each and every day and walk in that newness of life and victory that you've given us. So, Father, we praise you, we adore you, and we honor you in the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. In this morning, we thank God for Booker T. Washington class of 1965, particularly uh, Pastor Chester Jackson, who was here with us, a part of the class, and uh, Pastor of the Metropolitan Baptist Church and uh, Vice Moderator under me in the Creek District. Uh, his wife, Sister Maxine Jackson, who is president of our uh, minister's wives. Amen? Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. Uh, also, uh, as I gave uh, thanks to those uh, who helped uh, last week during our Oklahoma Baptist State Convention, uh, I saved one for now, and that is our church beautification. Amen. Who helped to uh, keep our church looking beautiful. And I say that because the fellowship choir was getting ready to sing. Deacon Walker said they needed two microphones, and I grabbed one from over here, and I saw the other one was here, and I was threatened to not pass microphones by the flowers. Amen. So I had a little moment of trepidation. Amen. <laughs> Deacon Walker said one will do, and I said, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we want to thank, uh, thank them for their help as well. Amen. Amen. Certainly we know that the Lord is good uh, and worthy, certainly, of all, uh, all praise. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's time for the word. Amen. Amen. I also want to thank God. I, I see a young man that my wife and I have known since about the seventh, eighth grade. Amen. Uh, Brother Kieran Boykins, who's in the back. Amen. And we thank God for his presence here today. Amen. Uh, I want to call your attention to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10. Uh, and we're going to go to verse 46. Amen. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Amen. The Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10. And we're going to go to verse 46 and read through verse uh, 52. Amen. St. Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 46. When you have it, uh, I know you'll say amen. 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 Uh, reading from the American Standard Version, it says, Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with the disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, stand up, he is calling you. Throwing aside his cloak and his garments, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road. Amen. Amen. As you will see this morning, I want to talk from the thought. I just can't hold my peace. I just can't hold my peace. My brothers and sisters, the premise of this pericope, this text, is that you should never allow people to keep you from praising God or praying to Him. You should never allow anybody to stop you from praising God or praying to Him. And my brothers and sisters, we see a group of people trying to prevent a man from receiving his blessing from God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, there are a whole lot of incidents that take place in the world. In other words, whenever we are in a traffic jam or we are in 9 o'clock or 5 o'clock traffic, they have something that's called road rage. And that means we literally don't like anybody getting in front of us. We don't like anybody cutting us off. Somebody talk to me here today. Matter of fact, we get literally upset. Amen? 
But listen, you, you ought uh, over against road rage, you ought not let anybody block you from being able to praise or pray to God. Listen, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. It's his final confrontation with his opposition. Jericho is 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem. It is a wealthy and a beautiful city. Matter of fact, it was a tourist spot. Through this paradise of plenty, we see Jesus is surrounded by a multitude. We also notice that his reputation preceded him. The word was out that Jesus was in the place and the crowds were following him. As a matter of fact, it was Passover season and a multitude of folk and well-wishers were going to Jerusalem and the spotlight is on Jesus. The Bible says there was a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. And we need to understand that his name was not Bartimaeus. The, the prefix Bar means son of. And it literally means he was the son of a man by the name of Timothy. So we do not even know his name. But yet we know that he cried out to Jesus. Now listen. The emphasis is not on his condition but his position. He is sitting on the side of the road, literally begging. And we see folk on the side of the road all the time, begging. And we pass them by. On the side of the road, while life is passing him by, dressed up but sitting on the sidelines. Listen, many folk are sitting on the side of the road while life and possibility and potential and purpose are passing them by. He was blind on the side of the road begging. Listen, he didn't think about that there would be a day that would be different than any other day. He never concluded that tomorrow was not going to be like any other day. And my brothers and sisters, there are a whole lot of folk as conducted by a survey who are literally living life waiting to die. <laughs> William Moulton Marston noted, noted psychologist surveyed 3,000 people and he asked the question, what do you have to live for? 95% said that they were just enduring the present while waiting for the future. Simply waiting for something to happen. Waiting for children to grow up. Waiting for next year, waiting for a trip, waiting for tomorrow to rescue them from today. My brothers and sisters, there are a whole lot of folk who are simply living today on the sideline of life, waiting for tomorrow to rescue them from today. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand this text teaches us a number of things. First thing we notice in this text is the congestion on the highway. And I want us to understand as we notice the congestion on the highway, we should not let the congestion on the highway keep us from being blessed by God. Because in the midst of the congestion on the highway, we see the Savior's ministry. The Bible says in verse 46 that Jesus came to Jericho. And when he came to Jericho, he only had his disciples. But when he left Jericho, he had a large crowd of people. Y'all missed that. When he came to Jericho, he only had his 12 disciples. But when he left, he had a large crowd of people. Listen, when Jesus shows up, lives are changed. And 12 will turn into a crowd. Listen, if you want to see your church grow, just let Jesus come into place. And when lives are changed, folks will come running into the presence of the Lord. Jesus came with a few, but lives were changed and they left with many. Listen, 
in this congestion on the highway. And listen, we ought not be upset when a whole lot of folk are trying to come to Jesus. Because Jesus is able to meet everybody's need at the same time. A lot of times, church folks will even find in this text, don't want nobody else coming. Because they want to hoard Jesus all to themselves. A large crowd came and there was a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, that was sitting on the road. And don't look at his condition, but notice where the man was. Because we notice in the midst of the highway congestion, the man made a heartfelt cry. When he heard that Jesus the Nazarene was in the area, he began to cry out and say, notice the text tells us that when he heard that Jesus, listen, he could not see. So he didn't see Jesus coming. And, and God does something unique with the senses whenever someone doesn't have one. He enhances the other. So listen, other folks could see Jesus coming. But this man heard the crowd. And when he heard the crowd, he said, wait a minute, that sounds like a whole lot of folks. I better get me a bigger tin cup. Y'all not going to play with me here today. But there, I hear more folk than I normally hear. I might get some more change in my cup. But then he said, wait a minute, this crowd is different than the other crowd. Because they are crying out and they are praising Jesus. The man said, wait a minute, I've heard about this man, Jesus. He has opened blind eyes for other folk before. The man said, wait a minute, I'm going to put down my cup because Jesus is coming. I'm going to get more than just a little change today. Listen, whole lot of us live with no expectation. But when Jesus is in the place, we need to raise our level of expectation. Man took out his cup, but he heard the crowd and said, there's a different group of folk in this place. There's something different. The man was sightless. The fact is that he could still hear. Listen, the man could hear and he cried out to Jesus. When he heard that Jesus was in the place, he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now I want you to notice something about verse 47. Because when the man gave his heartfelt cry, and he realized there was something different about the crowd and Jesus was here. The man knew something. He said, you got to be able to connect a name with your need. you got to be able to connect a name with your need. Now the folks were saying, Jesus of Nazareth. The man said, son of David. Listen, Jesus of Nazareth. Speaks to his humanity. Son of David speaks to his divinity. And the man said, There's not just a man. God is coming to Jericho. And I'm going to use the divine name of God and connect it with my needs. Wait a minute. When the crowds were coming before, the man thought his need was money. So he had a tin cup. But when he heard Jesus was coming, he realized his need was not money, but this. So he said, Son of David, grant me mercy. Listen, whatever you're going through, you got to connect the name with the need. At the name of Jesus, every need, every problem, That Jesus is Lord. Listen, there was nothing wrong with the man's voice. And a whole lot of us need to understand. I don't know what's going on with us, but ain't nothing wrong with our voice. But the problem with a whole lot of us is that we want to live on somebody else's experience with God. We don't have any experience with God ourselves. So, so
so we want to live on somebody else's experience with God. We want to piggyback on somebody else's encounter with God. We want to ride the fumes of somebody else's expectation. Listen, there are a lot of times when we'll have a great worship experience. And then we'll come back next Sunday wondering why that Sunday is not the same as last Sunday. Well, the reason why the next Sunday is not the same as last Sunday, because only one somebody has an experience with God. The rest of us are living vicariously on the experience somebody else had with God. Listen, a whole lot of folk in church are waiting for those one or two or three people to wonder who they are to get happy in church. And if they don't get happy, we don't get happy. You can't live on somebody else's face. You gotta have your own faith. A lot of us don't feel comfortable getting happy and praising God until those one or two or three people in First Baptist who ain't saying you get happy. Get happy. And we live it off their happiness. But somebody else's expectation, somebody else's experience and encounter can't help you through the week. You got to know God all for yourself. Notice, notice my brothers and sisters, not only we see the highway congestion and the heartfelt cry, but we also see the harassing crowd. The harassing crowd told the man, I want you to hold your peace. Now listen, I'm going to mess with y'all today. That, that, that don't just happen in Jericho. It happened in First Baptist. There are people who have visited here and praised God. And folk told them to sit down because we don't do that here. 